Is Dr. Sean Baker the carnivore guru a conspiracy theorist? I'm Dr. Eric Westman and welcome back to another Dr. Westman Reacts. If you don't have my top 10 tips on how to start keto the right way, please look in the description below. And thank you for your recommendations of videos to react to and comments and feedback. I appreciate it. This video by Dr. Sean Baker says he's being attacked. Let's see what he has to say. Okay, apparently I am some sort of right-wing conspiracy theorist, or at least I've been labeled that way, according to this new plant-based news article written by this person who goes by the name of Claire Hamlet. She apparently is also a pigoneer, whatever the heck that is. But anyway. So you always consider the source. Dr. Baker, I've met personally. He has spoken at a bunch of keto meetings. You can learn about people when you see them talk and then ask them questions and, you know, chat them up in the hallways. It makes me a little leery of people who are just internet influencers who never come out and show their face, but I, that people can work out of their home and actually have a living just being a pundit, I suppose. But I value people like Sean Baker, who is a physician, although orthopedic surgeon, has medical training and will come out publicly and speak about what he believes and what the science says, has a book as well. So Claire Hamlet apparently is an environmental person. What does that mean? You know, writer on, writer on animals, environment, climate. Well, so unfortunately, there is sort of a dumbed down, simplistic view that we can save the planet by not eating meat. And I'm going to be focused on human health. And if you have to be sick yourself to save the planet, this is a conundrum. And of course, we've been in situations where there have been technological fixes. But anyway, so what we see here is a environmental animal, save the animals kind of person attacking Dr. Baker. Apparently, there is some misinformation out there that talks about the healthfulness of meat and the relative deficiency of plant-based diets. And if you are aligned with that, then you are now apparently a right-wing conspiracy theorist. You're probably a racist. You're probably, you know, you have allegiance to the Nazi party or some, you know, some nonsense that's out there. And isn't that true these days? I mean, if you've turned off the internet, good for you. <laughs> and, but there, no, actually, there's a lot of good information you can learn. But the idea that you can, without science, start to pick away at someone's argument, it become, it's a political thing. It's like you're in the political uh, arena now. And, and so this idea that we don't have a whole lot of science to persuade people, why don't we then start attacking the character of somebody, attack their political views on something that's entirely irrelevant to the matter at hand, which is how to be healthy with what you eat. So unfortunately, we've seen a lot of this sort of, you know, it's unethical, it's misinformation. It's, and I was at a recent meeting of the Low Carb USA slash Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners. And I, I learned a lot about that. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, I have been included with the likes of a guy named Tucker Carlson, who most of you probably are familiar with. He was on Fox News. Well, it's kind of funny. In this political arena, if you label someone as going along with Tucker Carlson or someone of that in that realm, you're actually gaining friends for the person you're critiquing. It's so interesting how tone deaf some people are. I remember when a politician got up and said, I don't even pay taxes, you know, and there was a whole group of people, oh, I can't believe he doesn't pay taxes. Well, there's a whole other group of Americans who do their best to get out of paying taxes. So, so you're always, you're gaining friends for someone when you're, you're thinking that your attack is a negative one. It may even be a positive one. There's a guy named Cabot Phillips who I hadn't heard of before. Apparently he's a senior editor at something called the Daily Wire. And supposedly, you know, this is so, something bad, I suppose, you know, to be labeled right wing. I think maybe in years past, you could use that as an extremist. But right now, really anybody that doesn't agree with the most outrageous stuff 
that doesn't agree with some of the just, you know, let, let's all eat bugs and live in a box. <laughs> well, I have to admit, Dr. Baker goes on to extremes to make a point. And then also the internet is now set for views. You want to get people to watch and, and being really extreme and radical and, and rambunctious actually gets you views. And Dr. Baker has done his share of rambunctious videos, I have to say. But the idea that there has to be total belief in one thing, I, I, I totally understand that. And we can differ on views about lots of different things, but what does it have to do with human health? That's what I'd like to know. It kind of reminds me of the, the movie, I know this dates me a little bit, but it was called I, Robot. You know, all this concern about human health. And you watch the I, Robot, where the robot, is, the, the computer is actually designed to save the humans. So that's the operating system, right? And so the movie progresses, and sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but it's been around for so long. Uh, the computer actually sees that humans are killing themselves. So in order to, to you know, do the mission of saving humans, the robot has to kill humans because humans are killing themselves. So you get into this logical conundrum where, you know, if I believe that what I eat influences climate change and saving the planet, I've seen people even eat things that make them sick and they don't know that what they're eating is making them sick because everyone else says it must be good for you. And so you're starting to worry about the vitamin levels and taking probiotics and all this when really it was just the food. So uh, so the extremist stuff is, is out there and we just kind of have to, you know, glean from it uh, what we can. He's considered a right-wing conspiracy theorist. So uh, she's blaming me <laughs> and, and others like me for... Uh, causing the the UK to scrap a proposed meat tax, uh, to cause Italy to ban synthetic meat, and also the recent elections in the Netherlands where the Farmer Freedom Party sort of won. Apparently it's our fault. I don't speak Dutch, nor do I speak Italian, but... <laughs> well, actually, Dr. Baker, you don't know. You may be influencing these people, but yeah, did you hear? I mean, so Italy with the impossible burger and all this plant-based stuff that's turned into something that looks like meat, they're actually be, you know, was becoming very purist and saying we're not going to allow that you know, non-food item into the country, which is, was fascinating. And the idea that you would put a tax on red meat so that people will eat less of it, you know, it's a strategy that countries have used to reduce gas consumption to reduce cigarette consumption. But the data are not so clear with red meat. It's a political, socioeconomic, ethical, religio agenda. It's not regarding human health, which is what I'd like to stick to. You know, show me a paper in humans, even even just a pilot study where you've done something, then then we'll get the conversation going. I suppose somehow, I guess enough of them speak English and they were listening to me daily to make that decision. It wasn't that they, of their own opinion, came to the conclusion that it's idiotic to stop eating food that we've eaten for our entirety and, and, and rather not consume the, you know, the, the soy slop synthetic ultra-processed garbage that people want to foist upon it. <laughs> well, to unpack that a little bit, there was a English surgeon who who said uh, how silly it is to blame a modern illness like diabetes or heart disease on a food that's been around for a long time, pretty much all of human history. There's been meat and animal product consumption. So to blame diabetes or heart disease, which is a new phenomenon on an old food, is really kind of silly unless you have really solid data. It just doesn't make sense. The, so face validity is the term in the medical world that it just doesn't make sense. Uh, so the idea of an old food, ancestral health, hunter-gatherer, paleo, primal, I think these are all kind of in the same, like if, if there was music, classical music, it's all in this sort of genre of low-carb, healthy eating, 
learning what makes sense evolutionarily and from there may be some ethical or, or ethnic excuse me and then ethnic differences uh, but these foods have been around a long time and then he says all of this other stuff that's being foisted upon us well the the industry apparently makes more money processed food industry can make more money on plant-based things because you're not having to take the time to make the meat, apparently. And then the idea of having meat grown in a lab, of course, would be to get away from the idea that you had some other, some cruelty to animals in the, in the way we slaughter them and kill them. And, and, you know, I'm not happy with that, but I'm grateful for the opportunity to, that these animals have had lives and they help us. So how we ethically approach that can be different. So anyway, we live in obviously strange times, you know, all things considered, if that's what being right wing is, I'm okay with that label, to be honest. I don't consider myself particularly political. Uh, I mean, there's obviously things I agree with some politicians on and things I don't, and it doesn't matter what party they're from. You know, I, what I will tell you is that uh, it is incredibly important to push back, guys. Don't be silenced. Don't be cowed. Keep talking. Keep speaking up. And we're going to win this thing. You guys take care. <laughs> so... And then the language starts getting into, you know, protecting our tribe and our people, and it's a battle out there. I, I think that's a useful way to think about it, but it, it, you can take it too far. Do you, are you so upset about this that you'll, you know, put, if you love trees, apparently some people will put metal spikes in the trees so that if they're cut down, it hurts the human who cuts them down or gets, makes the machine not work right. So I mean, that's pretty extreme there. But this reminds me, and I learned a lot from going to the meeting in Boca Raton just a few week, weekends, weeks ago. And this is a joint meeting of the Low Carb USA, which has been a long uh, standing meeting now in its 10th year with the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, which is the idea that we can train people how to help their metabolic health fast, like treating and creating relief workers to go in to help where there's a hurricane. So we have an epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes and metabolic problems, heart disease. Let's train users and coaches and nutritionists and dietitians, of course, and doctors, anyone who's, who's interested. But you don't have to learn how to do surgery, like be a, be a doctor formally trained to help someone change their lifestyle and know that enough to make a, a really impactful change. So that's the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners mission, really, and I'm on the board of directors there, helped to start that organization. At this meeting, the, Dr. Eric Berg got up, who's one of the biggest internet influencers, and Dr. Eric Berg, B-E-R-G, and he gave a talk that was all about the internet influencing and the detail of where the information and disinformation is coming from, how, you know, the where he has so many videos, you can't find them as easily as before. So there's now some manipulation on what we thought would be kind of a free-for-all. If you had the highest views, the highest clicks, you go to the top so that other, so the people vet the information. And so he showed some examples where that's not the case anymore. So there's influence now in, in this arena. And the most important thing I learned is that it's the, this plant-based sort of thing coming out to influence, show misinformation on things that are, are actually true and, and are fine, the science behind low carb and keto. And then some organizations that are under the, the, the guise, the names, like they should be great for human health and all that, but they're really kind of agenda-based and ideology-based to keep you away from eating meat. So, my goodness, there's a lot of, of influence going on and, and, you know, sort of in the idea that people are project what they're doing onto other people. I have to think that this video, which started from a writer who who actually is involved in a conspiracy, the the conspiracy is financial, ethical, you know, what they say is ethical and moral and religious and financial 
and really doesn't have so much to do with human health. So there is a conspiracy going on, but it's the other side. <laughs> so of course they'll blame a conspiracy theory on Sean Baker, you know, having secret meetings with the Italian government or something like that. It's, but you know, again, if you don't have the science to support it, you get into ad hominems, and and you get into meaning you attack the character of the person or who the person is, instead of the science. So you know, let's keep it to the science. And uh, I have to also just comment on being at this low carb USA Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners meeting, combined meeting, that we had a couple days focused on type one diabetes and the use of low carb diets. There are several doctors who are type 1 themselves. This is the condition of insulin deficiency where you have to inject insulin. It's not an option, but you don't have to eat a ton of carbs. So what these doctors found is that if you reduce the carbs, you reduce the insulin in a type 1, you don't have such big excursions. And so we had a focus session on the use of carbohydrate restriction, which is the, the medical term, scientific term, or low carb diets or carbohydrate reduction, if you will, the use of these with type 1 diabetes. And what's fascinating is that these were the parents of people with type 1, so children with type 1. And they told story after story after story of how the medical world is not only not supporting them, they're antagonizing them. And I'm, I'm just listening, and I, I'm trying to figure out how, how we can possibly help these people, the, the, the people with type 1. And the system is designed to push carbs and to push insulin, and even to the point of if you come in to the doctor, some doctors will be upset, even if the blood sugar is normal, if you don't feed your child carbs. Uh, you know, okay, so these doctors haven't gone through the training that we have at, at SMHP or at the Obesity Medicine Association. I'm past president of that one. So these doctors don't know that you really don't need carbohydrate, even a child. So, and, and again, there are these doctor influencers who have books on this. These parents went and learned from the super user doctor who, who's fixing themselves. And at the end of the couple of days, we were going to be writing a position paper from this organization to support the use of low carb and keto diets and type one diabetes because they're being, the parents of these children are being antagonized by the medical system, even though they're getting better blood sugar control on less insulin and less carbs. So, at the end of the, the session, I just kind of said, well, just don't tell the doctor what you're, you're feeding your child. Just show the blood sugar is being perfectly normal in the A1C. And, and they listened politely and said, yeah, we've tried that. And they, they will want to know exactly what they, they push carbs on their, their children. And then the idea of low blood sugars, the doctors will come back and say, your, your blood sugars are too low. You need to go and eat more carbs, and you know, and that's just ridiculous. If a, if someone with type one or or and or type two diabetes comes in with normal blood sugars, or they're they're even you know in the very low normal range, that's not a bad thing. And but now they're well, but you're not eating carbohydrates. It was just so convoluted, and and the parents were frustrated, and and yet the stories are just phenomenal of how their children now are into their their young adulthood and going to college and thriving, even though they haven't had much carbohydrate, even though they've had type one diabetes for many years. So the idea of conspiracy theories and all this, there, there is a paradigm view that has to change. And, and it's as solid and difficult as, you know, thinking that the sun it doesn't go around the earth, even though it sure looks like it, and that the sun actually is in the middle of our solar system, not the earth. So if a doctor isn't in charge anymore of the patient, the child with type 1 diabetes, that they've lost the center of the universe. They've lost control when the parents are actually achieving better outcomes compared to 
the medical current medical paradigm. So we're you know we're in this time even you know, conspiracy theory aside of, of paradigm shifts of paradigms clashing, and just you know remain calm, take a deep breath. Let's focus on the health of people and the idea that we want research and studies. But there's a lot that can be learned from using uh, an approach and publishing papers of many people using an approach. And that's the level of the science for type 1 diabetes. There's a survey of people who are not eating many carbs and they have great blood glucose control. So there are things you're going to learn, including something like a carnivore diet, which I don't think is the first place to go, but it may actually be helpful. And we're waiting for science on the carnivore diets, meaning clinical trials, just because you get to know that people are actually doing it and you measure parameters that have to do with health. But the anecdotal information that you can reverse serious medical conditions with a carnivore diet is, is true. I mean, it's repeatedly been shown. Now it's the safety of it. What percent of people will respond to it? All those questions still need to be worked out. So it's okay, Dr. Baker. <laughs> it's funny because he doesn't need anyone to really to give him support. He, he's a tremendous tour de force himself. So, but he's telling other people to stick to your guns. Don't be worried about these conspiracy theories that really aren't true. And then you might be thinking, well, how do you know? Well, well, you just heard it. If you like this, please like, please subscribe so you don't miss out on further content. And if you don't have my top 10 tips on how to start keto the right way, please look in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.